Hi again, everyone. I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous, and here is our story. Hi, Ollie. I'm a new subscriber and would like to remain anonymous. Your channel has been a lifesaver. Thanks for keeping it real. My ex-husband and I were married almost 10 years. We have two young kids. We grew our own business and made a good living. We divorced last December. I didn't put two and two together that I married that I was married to a covert narcissist until our seventh year of marriage. Looking back, I see the red flags clearly clear as day. But at the time, he was extremely stealthy and secretive, and he rarely got caught. Little did I know that each time I confronted him about a lie, he would just figure out a new and better ways of continuing his bad behavior without my knowledge. For instance, strip clubs, gambling deals, escorts happened during work hours. Instead of client, ha client happy hours, they lasted till 3 a.m. Uh, the strip club thing, I mean, I'm not in the strip clubs. I, I'm not a gambler, okay? Escorts, you're, you're, you're crossing another line. I mean, there is another line you're crossing from strip club to escort. I mean, escorts, what he's like. Hiring, he's basically hiring prostitutes. So when you say looking, he found a way to get around it, that would tell me you had caught him doing this shit in the past. But you said, you see clearly now the red flags. I mean, that's a big fucking red flag. I mean, that's a blaring, that's a, that's a blaring air, air siren. Here's the short version of my narcissist abuse. Over the span of seven years, his double life grew and grew and his mask began slipping more and more. Gaslighting, guilt tripping, lying, withholding communication, intimacy, and the silent treatment became normal life. The more I told him that I wanted his words of affirmation and attention, the more he refused. He knew my greatest fear was abandonment due to my shitty childhood and he poured salt in that wound every chance he got. They always do. If there's an open, if you got an open wound, the narcissist is gonna pour salt in it every time, every time. Because it's a means of control. We had a handful of knockdown, drag out fights, but ultimately, I was feeling invisible in my own skin, and that drove me to the brink. I slipped into a manic depression, always on edge, paranoid, and self-medicating to escape the silent evil that surrounded me every day. He convinced me that I needed to be hospitalized, but luckily my eyes were opening and I began to see and I began to see who my husband truly was. It was terrifying. Fast forward to present day, we are now co-parenting our two kids. After the divorce, he discarded me easily, then love bond me until I agreed to give it one more chance. Once he was back in power, he discarded me again, saying he needed space. I started to see his patterns and cut through all his bullshit. I began seeking out support groups and, and channels like yours to help me to help put myself back together. Hearing other victim stories similar to mine has given me the peace and validation I needed to move on with my adult life. But, like clockwork, he senses when I'm getting stronger and goes back to his old tricks to try breaking me back down. You know why? I'm going to tell you why he does all this. Because he's on the down low. He's on the down low. He hates women. Okay? That's why he needs to go to strip clubs and hire escorts. Because that's the only way... Unless he's somehow demeaning them and degrading them, he can't perform. And he hates himself for being gay, secretly. That's why he does this. He doesn't want to see you. He, the reason where his love bombing comes from. His love bombing is almost the same as throwing mon money at a stripper or hiring, or hiring a prostitute. Because he sees when he's doing it, he's love bombing you when you're away from him. And you're trying to be happy. And his goal, because he hates women, is to destroy your happiness. That's what motivates him. Is the degradation of women. Is embarrassing you. Is holding you back. The love bombing has a purpose. The love bombing is to destroy you ultimately. Because he hates seeing you like that. 
Not because he's jealous. He's jealous over your happiness. He's not jealous over what you may or may not be doing. It's only your happiness that that he's jealous of. Why? Because he's more than he's more than a covert. He's a male borderline, is what he is. Once he was back in power, he disarmed me again, saying he needed space. Right? He broke you. Once you're broken, once he's resalted the wound. You're, 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 he's done with you again. I started to see his patterns and cut through his bullshit. I began seeking out support groups and channels like yours to help put myself back together. Hearing other victims' stories similar to mine has given me the peace and validation I needed to move on with my old life. But like clockwork, he senses when I'm getting stronger and goes back to his old tricks to, to try breaking me down. I've included one of his nicer rants that happened just last week. It's a good example of how passive aggressive and childish he gets when he's running low on his supply especially since i don't give him much of a reaction these days the following texts are about me going on a handful of dates nothing serious unfriending him on social media our pets and our kids having extracurricular activities on one of his custody weekdays same blame shifting guilt projection threats pity party as usual only difference that shit no longer has power over me I pray that someone out there is facing something similar, that hearing my experience will help. Narcissists never change. Thank God that's not true for their victims. Thanks again, Ollie. Anonymous. And let's go to the text messages. Absolutely hate the fact that blank and all other guys that you have hung out with are allowed to see what my kids are doing when they are with you, but I'm not. That's the biggest cop out in the world. You know what's going to happen. I'm going to get to the point where I really don't care about it. And believe me, I'm almost there. And you are and you are really going to wish that you weren't being so cold mean. I'm going to be honest with you here, Anonymous, because these text messages are at the top of her email. And I saw the first thing and I saw... I only saw it like briefly. I saw kids. You can't. And I'm thinking this is about that. That was about the kids. And it's not about the kids. It's not about the kids. It's about your happiness. And he's using these kids as a, as a guilt crutch, as salt for that wound. What he really doesn't want is to, is is you to be happy. Okay, and him not to be able to see it because this seems like it's a response to you unfriending him on Facebook or on social media. And him not being able to, to, to be there to throw salt in that wound when it needs to be. The narcissist salted wounds heal once you kick them out, don't they? You need the wounds to heal. So they can't keep throwing salt in them. She responds, is that a threat? And it is. He's, but he, what he's threatening you is, uh, when he says, I'm going to give up. See, and that's what I thought. I thought he was saying, I was going to give up trying to see my kids. What he's saying is, I'm going to give up, like, basically, basically, he's, he's, putting, he's putting the bait. He's putting the carrot on the string. I'm going to give up and you'll never get me back. Like, that's what he thinks. He thinks you're just there to come running back to him at, a, at any given time. He answers, well, I hope that all the boys that you have hung out with are just loving all the pics of my children. I'm so happy all these random people get to experience my children. You know, if that's what he had opened up with, I'd believe it. I'd believe it. But he opened up with you. At least I hope that my family members get to see them. At least I get to see my kids in person half the time. I don't even know who you are still friends with in my family that can get to see my kids. Wow. This is a borderline. See, he wants to, he sees his children as possessions too. 
And I'm not saying withhold custody or visitation from him because that'll, you can't do that. But he's clearly seeing, he sees everybody and everything as a possession in his life. And I'm telling you, this dude is on the DL. He's on the down well. What you think you know, what you caught him with strip clubs and escorts, it's only the half of it. I promise you. I promise you. And I think, and I could be wrong on this, I think this is another black female re writing into me who was probably abused in her past by her mother, which is why she was susceptible to this anonymous, right? She replies, I barely post pictures and you aren't on my friends list anymore because you would dissect every like and comment, then try to accuse me of dating random people. You're broken up. You're divorced. You can date whoever you want. I got tired of, of answering irrelevant questions and knowing that you were watching it so closely, it freaked me out. He replies, okay, good for you. So hopefully you feel better about people you barely know that are able to enjoy my kids more than you want me to. It's cool. I'll make my own memories with them when you find out about, you can find out about through other random people. I'm looking at Disney cruises to take them on, just so you know. What is that you're trying? You're using your kid, they're, they're pawns. He's using his children as pawns. You have, he has access to his kids. It's great he can take him on a Disney cruise. I don't think he has any intention of doing it. You know the kind of fucking, you know what I would do to have that kind of access to my kid? To just have her answer the fucking phone? And this guy, come on, man. This is a borderline. This is a borderline male and he's dangerous, quite honestly. She, awesome, just let me know the dates. And I'll probably be taking them for Thanksgiving. They will absolutely, she answers back, they will absolutely love that. I know they will. You're handling this perfectly. Do not deny him access to his children. Do not. Do not let him have that, 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 unless it becomes so necessary where he's becoming violent and stalking and it gets to that point. Because you can't just cut him out completely because you've had children with him. And I'll be signing them up for school activities at the YMCA or Wednesdays on Wednesdays and Thursdays soon. What is it? You, did, did, are you married to my ex-wife? I mean, this is like what... Daughter has choir on Wednesdays, but do whatever you want to do. This is her answer. Okay, well, son can go to a class then and you can figure out how to work that schedule with getting them to their stuff on your day. Just use trying to use this as a punt. Well, I'm going to do this to affect your life. Again, not because he wants his daughter to go to choir, he wants his son to go to class, he wants them to enjoy a Disney vacation, he wants to spend Thanksgiving with him. No, no. He, they're all to, to make your life miserable. Using his children to make your life miserable. She gives him the thumbs up gif. She gives him the thumbs up emoticon. And what were and what were you talking about asking if I was threatening you? Makes no sense. Because he thinks and you see every type of threat is physical. He doesn't think you're smart enough to to catch on to what he's doing here. That it's actually, it's just supposed to scare you, but you're not supposed to actually realize it's just a threat. Just because I, just because I said I'm almost to the point that I don't give a shit about you and your hatefulness and the fact that your twisted way of trying, of trying to hurt me is not going to hurt me anymore. Like, here comes the guilt. Like, what are you talking... Like, it doesn't work 
and now he wants to revisit the threat that you didn't re- that that you said or we asked him are you th- now he wants to go back to that it's like yeah I'm threatening you yeah, I'm threatening you why aren't you getting more upset about it he's got nowhere to throw his salt this is when the narcissist doesn't have anywhere to throw their salt they don't have a wound anymore to throw their salt in All these flavors, why you got to be salty? Listen, man, you're free to go to strip clubs and hire any goddamn escort you want at this point, but that's not what it's about. It's about degrading, it's about truly degrading women, truly degrading his wife. Truly, that's what it's about because he hates women. And I promise you, this guy is on the down low. Everything about him screams it. And another thing, I'm not going to let you try to make me feel bad and bully me about the animals anymore. You wanted them at your house and you wouldn't let me have any of them even after you tried to make me feel bad for not taking any of them. Cruel people in this world and you are definitely part of that group. Okay, I can see that you're ignoring me. I could see that you're ignoring me and that's probably smart another threat because I'm getting all worked up for no reason because you're a borderline because he's a borderline male that's why he's getting worked up like an emotional borderline down low male and probably wants to go claw some girl's eyes out take it out on some woman because I'm getting all worked up for no reason other than I'm just mad at you for how this whole situation life has worked itself out. Sorry that I'm blowing up and getting mad. I just need to get it out. So threat into gaslighting into guilt trip. This is what happens when the narcissist has nowhere to throw their salt. They just become salty. They just become Salty themselves. All these flavors. Why you gotta be salty? That's the real question. So, I hope that helps. Thank you so much, Anonymous, for your contribution and your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take